Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to see a Tableau scenario-based interview question. So now uh, the trend is little changing, guys. So we need to you know stay updated. So earlier, what used to happen? They used to ask theoretical-based questions or you know, one-word uh, type of questions. You know, it was pretty much easier to answer, or you know, they will try to understand the concept from you. But now, you no. Know, the trend is evolving so these days what is happening is during the interview they are giving the access to their screens and allowing us to access their tableau and asking us a few tableau scenarios like that so uh, like i have recently attended many and in that one common question that i was found or like frequently asked question was like on parameter what they asked me to create one use case it can be anything so so parameter is one very very important use case for anyone who is a tableau developer so if you are creating one dashboard you know there is 99% probability that we would be using at least one parameter to address a scenario so today we are going to cover few use cases so that we can you know create at least one during our interview so that is the intention behind that okay so while i start doing that please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and let us begin so let me make it very easier here before we start so first thing that we should know before we even start working on that is what is the data type of parameter that we need this we need to answer ourselves okay then after that the first step that we need to do is create a parameter and second one was second one is show the parameter and third one is establish a relationship with the database so remember these three steps during your implementation you will never go wrong in implementing a parameter here so let us begin so before i begin i wanted to tell that uh, first question that i was asked was like you know what is the difference between a filter and a parameter and then i was asked to create a use case in parameter so that was the situation here so let us go to tableau here and i'm creating my first use case here so here my use case is i want to highlight based on the category that is being selected so i'm just creating a dummy view here using category and i'm taking a sales as my standard measure now what what we need to do is we need to create a parameter here so what i'm doing create a parameter which is our first step choose category i'm naming it as choose category now what is the important thing that we need to answer what is the data type of the parameter that we want to create so in this scenario string parameter will work so that's why i'm taking string and i'm taking list of values because i have only few values so either we can add or write manually here or we can use it from the field so because i have limited values i'm taking it from my category values so these are the three values click ok okay now if i click on this show parameter now you see we have created a parameter here but nothing is happening as of now because we haven't established any relationship now let us write a calculation here choose category for parameter i'm writing hyphen you can write any uh, identifier to you know make your job easier in real time that you know you have used a parameter in this calculated field so uh, for that to identify myself i have written it as p which indicates that i have already used a parameter inside this so i'm simply writing uh, taking category as a my dimension which is equal to choose our parameter apply 
Okay, so I'm just taking this and dropping it on color shelf. So let us edit little color here to make it look good. So true, I'm making it this and false this. Now you see whatever the, the category item that I'm choosing from that drop down, it is getting highlighted and other is getting grayed, grayed out. So even this will work when I drill down to subcategory level. So this is one important use case for parameter. So I'm writing use case one. So let us see another use case here. My intention is to have a dynamic measures here. So sometimes user might want to see sales or sometimes user might want to see profit for the selected view. So here again, our first step is to choose the aggregation that we want. So let me create a parameter here and I'm writing it as choose measure we can write. Sorry, I've created a calculated field here. So I will write as choose measure. Okay, so this time I'm taking integer as my data type and I'm taking list of values. So for now I'm giving user two options. So either he can select sales or uh, profit, but um, my actual value is integer, but I'm displaying that as sales and profit. So when it is but actually at the back end, it will communicate using this one and two, something that you need to understand, which is very important. Click OK. Second step, show the parameter. Now, whatever the user selects from here, that measure should show here. So I'm writing a calculated field for that. So like we wrote earlier, choose measure. And I'm writing P here. So I'm writing a case statement here, case of so you can write it in using if also if else also so whatever the way you want you can try okay so when it is one then i want sales when it is two then it is profit simple okay and end it so you can write it like this or you can aggregate here itself directly so there is also this way you can do so I'll aggregate here itself. Apply. Okay. Now I'm taking this field and dropping it on row shelf. Now when I'm selecting sales, it is showing sales and I'm selecting profit. It is showing profit. So I, while I do this, I also want my titles to be dynamic. So let us do that also. So displaying. So I'll go to insert and I'll take my profit here. So I want to highlight that. So I'm just coloring here, maybe making it bold and I'm making it center of the screen. Apply. Okay. Now, whatever the measure I choose, it is displaying the value for that. Okay. So this is our second use case. Let us see the third and very important use case here. Okay, so like uh, sheet swapping, we call one of the very, very commonly used and a very important use case with, uh, you know, interview perspective. So for that, what we need is we need to create three sheets. So I'm taking order date as a standard uh, around uh, dimension and I'm taking sales as my measure. So first I'm converting this into a bar chart and I will call it as bar chart. And let me duplicate this twice because we want view in uh, three different ways. So one is bar chart. Second one, I'm converting this into line chart. Maybe I'll have it at month level. And third one is maybe pie chart. So just to have three different charts here. Okay, so line chart, I'm creating. And pie chart.
okay so now we have created view now i want to create a parameter here and i'm selecting choose chart okay and this time i'm writing i'm taking string here and list i'm writing it as like say bar chart and uh, pie chart and line chart three charts i'll take three okay okay now i'm displaying this and i'm performing the stay same step for all of the charts that i have created showing them on the sheet so parameters are global so when i say global once you create that parameter will be available in the entire workbook okay we can use it accordingly now we need to establish a relationship our third step so i'm writing like say uh, choose uh, chart hyphen t so you see i'm simply taking uh, our parameter that we have created here now observe because i have selected bar chart this value is being passed here click apply okay if i take this and drop it here you see bar chart is coming because here we have selected bar chart and that is the value that is being passed on to okay so i'm clicking on cancel so same way i'll go here i'll select a bar chart and i'll select this and drop it here i want this to be true only when it is bar chart so i'll go to line chart i will change this selection to line chart now when i change it you see i'll get line chart here apply okay but now when i'm changing it to bar chart this is becoming blank whereas my bar chart will become true okay when i'm changing it to line chart from here this is becoming blank whereas my line chart will become active same way i am going to my third chart type here and i am selecting pie chart from here i'll take that and drop it here so one limitation that we have in parameter is we can select only one value at a time so we are going to use that for our advantage now i'm going to create a, a dashboard and take a container and in that container i will drop all of my charts using my shift button hold your shift button drag and drop inside the container okay now you see we have got all the three charts i am hiding the title because it's little confusing now when i select to pie chart pie chart is coming up when i select bar chart only bar chart when i select line chart only line chart so when we do little more formatting it looks like you know all is happening on the same sheet but technically speaking there are three sheets on top of each other here and one is becoming blank and another is becoming active so that is the concept that we need to understand in this implementation so that's it from my side in this video hope you like it if you like it please like share and subscribe thank you have a good day bye bye